Welcome, welcome to another live on Marlene's How To. So glad you could join me. And of course, be sure to use the chat right there, the live chat, so we can have some interaction, whether it be between, you know, us or the other people in the chat. Because time and time again, you guys talk to each other, and I absolutely love to see that. So, and let me know as soon as you can, by the way, if you can hear me, because that's very important to us, you know, be sure to leave it in the chat if you can hear me or not, so we know that everything is good to go. So, we are making Saturday soup today, of course, you know, this is, I'm Marlene, and this is my um, home and garden channel, and it's mostly about gardening, but of course, a lot of the times we garden because you want beautiful flowers, which I do that a lot, if you've been watching my channel for a while. But we also want to grow things that we can eat, you know, especially if they're organic things. You know, it feels so good when you reap things from your own backyard and you're able to enjoy them. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and do um, feature our star of the show today, which is in Jamaica. Well, they call this West Indian pumpkin. And in Jamaica, we call this, um, we just call it pumpkin. Some places they call it winter squash. And this one is store-bought. This is one of the favorite things that I love to grow you know, in my backyard, it does run a lot. It runs on a vine, so it takes up space. But typically what I do is I just kind of like keep it over. Let me turn this down a little bit here, trying to get the hot water going. We just try to keep it, you know, over to one side. And when we do that, you know, it just kind of runs along to the wall. And when it runs along up the fence, pardon me, then we still have a lot of space that we can use. Hi, Lorna. Welcome, welcome. So glad to see you. Glad you could join me. Hi, Bruce Lee. Hello, hello, hello. So this is the start of the show today. And we're just going to be doing one meal. Typically, we try to do like different ones, but the last slide was so long, guys. I'm trying to keep it short today. <laughs> so this is our pumpkin, our West Indian pumpkin, as we call it. If Deborah Cabasa were here, she does join in. She could tell me how they say it in Puerto Rico. I think it's calabaza is how they say it. Either way, we enjoy it, right? And it's typically um, this bears, you know, you'll have it mature in the fruit. Typically, I would say like um, October, like early September, October at that point, you know, that time of the year, um, just in time for those nice um, fall dishes. But, you know, if you're international, of course, whenever. In Jamaica, we love to have our Saturday soup, and that's what we're going to be doing today. And I have lots of things to put in there. Some of them, you'll know them. Some of them, you might not know them. And let me just keep up with the chat here. Hi, Mundell from Johnson Home Decor. Glad to see you, my dear. So you guys are going to recognize some of these things. And I have lots of friends from Guyana too. This is for you because you know you want to have your carbs in your soup because you want it to enrich your body and everything. So we're going to be using these in Guyana because um, I have Guyanese friends and they tell me that you guys call these Edos over there, the ones that shape round. You have some more slender ones too. Sometimes they call it Malanga root. In Jamaica, we just call it cocoa. Not like cocoa, like, you know, chocolate cocoa to make, you know, your hot chocolate drink or whatever. We just call it cocoa. I'm not sure where the name came from. If anybody knows, whether on the replay or watching live, you can tell me how that name came about. But let me just show you a close-up. It's kind of like, it's, it's on the root of a plant that looks like, um, kind of like elephant ears, kind of, sort of. And then you peel the skin off. You can see it has like, you know, like the roots on there because it is a, you know, it's a swollen root. And then you peel it off. So we're going to be using this today, but I'm not going to put it in too early because it's very nice and creamy. I just love it. If you love these, you can let me know if you're, you know, um, from the Caribbean or if you've had those type of international dishes, if you like them. We call them cocoa in Jamaica. Some people, they call them um, Edos, like from Guyana. So you can let me know. The next one is this one right here. This is one of my favorite things to have in my soup bar. Matter of fact, if I have ackee and saltfish, which is our Jamaica national dish, I love to have that there as well. This is a yam. I know in like in the United States and many other countries, when they say the yam, they're talking about a sweet potato. That's what we call them back home. But over um, in Jamaica, we call this yam. And this one is the yellow yam. I'm not sure if you can see, see somebody. I think my husband kind of did that to check to make sure that it looked yellow. So you can probably see the slight yellow color inside there. But some of them are white on the inside. You may see purple yam sometimes, you know, just different types. But I'm telling you, if you get the right one, because sometimes, depending on if you get a bad one, like the tip of the yam, sometimes it can be slightly bitter down here. But if you get a good piece of yellow yam, I'm telling you, man, there is nothing like it. My grandmother used to um, grow a lot on her property when we were, you know, growing up in Jamaica. So much so that we could actually sell some to the um, to the supermarkets down there, or grocery store, as we call it over here. 
Um, and you know, it was a lot, maybe like 300 pounds of yams, you know, they would dig. I mean, she didn't plant them herself. She had people who would do it for her, but, um, but we would sell them, you know, my mom would, you know, take them to the store, the, um, supermarket or grocery store, as we call it, and we'd sell them. But this, it is so good. I mean, you can make it if you don't have this. These are usually gotten at like international markets. You can go, then you can get these and they can, um, you know, you can use them to make whatever you want. And if you are diabetic, these things here like this and like this, because they are root provisions and they have a lot of fiber in them, they take a longer time to break down in your body. So these are the things you want to eat, not like pasta and all those other things. Yes, you can, but it's good when you put these in your meals because it really helps to, you know, to moderate your um, the blood, your blood sugar. Of course, I'm not a doctor, but I'm just saying that this is well known. And of course, something that more people may be familiar with um, would be these, you know, these are a must stay as far as putting them inside our soup goes. We're going to be putting this in there as well. And we're also going to be putting this. You can use different brands, but typically they're the ones that come from the Caribbean. Um, this one, sometimes they call it hen soup. You can see what this one is called here. Or sometimes it may just say chicken noodle soup. Sometimes it may say pumpkin soup. But they come in a pack like this and it has all that flavoring and you can use them on there. Let me keep up with the chat here. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, so Tiffany says, hello. Hello, Tiffany. And we've talked to Mondell and Lorna already. We have two Georgia Peaches. Hello, hello, hello. And we have Andrea's Kitchen Time. So funny, Andrea, your name just popped up there. Andrea's Kitchen Time from her channel because that's the next thing I'm going to talk about, and that is time. Um, I've never tried to grow time indoors, to be honest. Maybe you can with grow lights because, you know, I've been doing using my hydroponic system to grow herbs indoors. But I do pretty good with these. The first time we planted was my husband actually planted some thyme seeds. And they came back year after year. They dry down in the winter and then they come right back up in the spring. So they're pretty hardy. They're cold hardy. But we're in zone eight. So let me, you know, clarify that. We're in zone eight and they're pretty, pretty cold hardy. They come back every year because we were leveling off our backyard um, last growing season. We had to take them up and I gave one to my neighbor and I put one in the flower bed. But time, oh my gosh, it smells so good. And this is good for so, so many things. You can see how it looks. And you have different types of time too. But this is what this one looks like here. So I have a few out in the garden, but I didn't want to harvest those today. But if you are growing your time, go on right ahead. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? She said, I hope I didn't miss a lot. No, ma'am, you did not. Welcome aboard. <laughs> she said, what did I miss already? <laughs> Nothing much. We're just introducing the things. I'll show you them really quick. And that would be, we're going to put some yam in there, yellow yam. You can see the yellow right there. Let me turn it that way. And we have our potatoes and we have our cocoa root. Let me turn down the water because I made sure it was boiling already. And uh, we have our cocoa root or edos as they call it in Guyana. Some of my friends tell me that's what they call it. And we have our cock soup right here. And we have the thyme like I was just showing you a while ago. And of course, we can't leave this little bad boy out right here. What is this? This is our hot pepper. Now, it is not like a scotch bonnet pepper, but it's still good. We drop the whole pepper inside there, but make sure it doesn't burst. Because if it bursts, <laughs> oh, hey, this is my partner. Yeah, <laughs> not in crime. Hab habanero. <laughs> habanero. Yeah, this right. is a habanero pepper. Oh, this is so. not a scotch bonnet pepper. I didn't even know until then they call it scotchy. Tell you I'm behind the times because <laughs> we had put it on, uh, posted it on Instagram and one of our um, distant cousins, he was just like, he said, so you guys want to put scotchy in there? So I said, scotchy, I guess that means scotch bunny, but this is not a scotch bunny. Scotch bunny is a little bit more flat at the bottom yep. and it's a lot hotter than these or spicy as you'd call it, you know, over here in Jamaica, we say hot, you can mean hot like temperature or hot like spicy, like it might burn your tongue or something. But yeah, this is a habanero. It looks really good. And I'm going to get some seeds from this. And I'm going to be planting them very soon. So we'll have some of those of our own. So I don't have to buy any, right? Because mm -hmm. normally I grow like bell peppers, but typically, um, mm -hmm. yeah, normally I grow like bell peppers, but not the, um, the hot peppers, but I'm going to be doing that this time. And we have our scallion right here. And I'll show you some of them later that we've been growing in here from cuttings. That is kind of something you kind of have to put in your soup. You know, you really need to have this. If not, though, you have another option. You could pass me an onion, please, from over there. 
you can put onion in there. Let me keep up with the chat right here. Da, 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 da. So, and you guys are saying hi to each other, which is good. Cheryl says, when I go to the market, I buy more time than skelly. And oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and you know what is to me, you can tell me how you feel about this, but to me, the nicest thing for time is fish. Oh my goodness. Especially if it's something like snapper or parrot or goatfish, you know, something like that. Grunt, you know, like those, you know, those are kind of more like tropical type fish. You have to pay a lot to get them over here. But um, you can also get, um, you can put it on like your salmon. It doesn't pick up the flavor as well to me, yeah, but it still does. Yeah, because the oils in the salmon, it's, you know, oily fish as they call it, which is better for you anyway. It doesn't, you know, bring forth that thyme flavor as much as the other one. But I'm telling you guys, fish with some thyme. Andrea, no, you don't like fish. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> But those who love it know exactly what I mean. Time on the fish, it is so, so good. But anyway, if you don't have um, the, the scallion, we call these scallion or green onions, you can use like, um, you can use an onion instead. So, you know, it's just to give it that kind of thing. And if you want, you can also put garlic in there as well too. Sometimes I don't, but I'm telling you, these soups that we're making, and we have them typically on a Saturday in Jamaica, that's kind of like our tradition. And I hope that will never change. It is very healthy. And if you're not feeling well, again, I'm not a doctor, but I'm telling you, it makes you feel so good. You just kind of like, you're just warm. It's flavorful, but it's not spicy or greasy. Comforting. You know what I mean? It's like comfort, like a warm hug, you know, and especially because we have it all throughout the year. It doesn't matter if it's summer, winter, spring or fall. We have it all throughout the year. And um, but it's nicer over here, like when the weather is colder and you kind of, you know, have that going. So. Ah, so we have Gardening with Stacy. Welcome, Stacy. Welcome. Good to see you. She says, yeah. she says, hey, Brucey Bruce, how you doing? <laughs> Andrew says, not a fan of the fish at all. Yes, ma'am. I'm aware. I know you don't like fish, but it's okay. I knew, I knew how to grow it. It seems hard to catch as if I ever try planting anything, though. <laughs> it's never too late. That's why I have a gardening channel, man, to help out people who don't normally grow stuff to start growing. And this year, I'm hoping to do a lot more fruits and veggies in the backyard because, you know, I have a lot of flowers, but I want to do more of those. So, you know, make sure if you haven't subscribed, if you're watching the replay or you're on the chat right now, you never did, be sure to, you know, hit the subscribe button so you can follow along and see all the different things that we're doing. Cheryl says, yes, Marlene, garlic is a must for me. Rule of thumb, use four pegs and more. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're a garlic lover, aren't you? In that yeah, case, we'll put one in there. But it's, it, you know, it, and all of the different things that these herbs release, like your onions, well, it's just, you know, not so much a herb, but you know what I mean, that the onions release, that, you know, your thyme releases, um, you know, your, your green onion or skelly, and those things, they really help your body to feel better. And even the pepper, too. The pepper is good for certain things, too. It kind of helps it, you know? The only thing I didn't show you yet is the carrots. The carrots. I'm just going to put one. You see how, you know, these carrots are not like what we're used to bring back in Jamaica. Typically, they're about to here. And perhaps a little bit thicker than these. But, you know, we get different types over here. And he also brought pimento. Let me just show you. It's kind of like a peppercorn. You know, those who know peppercorn over here. Oh, yeah. I can show you what it looks like. So that's what it looks like, right? You're like a peppercorn, and then you basically just go ahead and you put a few of them in there. And that goes in anything. But tell me what you like your time with, because I like my time with fish, and I like it with um, I like it with rice and peas. When you smell that time with the rice and peas, oh, so good. What's the other one again? There are so three things. The garlic in there. Just for you, Cheryl. Because <laughs> sometimes no, you do some that we don't. Um, you didn't take the skin off? No. I just, I just, oh I just man, the whole yard. Man. Why did you do that? Side. Did you take it out, please? No, yes, no, <laughs> Cheryl. Would you tell him to way, take the garlic out and smash it first? Man, why no. you do that? <laughs> that way, to the skin, you won't eat it. Listen, we wanted to, we wanted to come out and come out and eat easier. You, you're not gonna take it out, you're gonna leave it in there. Trust well, me, I do it every we did, we did what I did on Saturday. That's why. Anywho, everybody who gets this in my serving, please just take it out because it's in the, the skin, which is clean and everything is fine. You washed it first. So yeah. but anyway, so um so the first thing we're gonna do since it is a chicken Saturday soup, he's gonna go ahead and um cut the chicken first because that's the first thing you wanna do, make sure your water comes to a boil. Yeah. And, also, you, and I always wash the chicken with um vinegar vinegar for for taking it in. 
Or you can use like if you have like um like a little bit of lemon, you can put a little lemon juice on just to cut the rawness. Um, you can put like, like a little lemon juice or a little lime juice on there, make sure the seeds don't wet and just wash it off, and you should be fine. And um, or you, like you said, you can use a vinegar to do it, whichever one you prefer, but just a little bit. You know, you don't want it to get sour, but just to you know clean it off a little bit and everything. So anyway, the first thing you want to do is to get your water to boil, which we can see the water is boiling right over here. And then after that, we're going to add the meat in first so the meat can kind of cook. And when you're making soup, especially if you're not feeling well, to help you to feel better faster, but you know, they call chicken soup the Jewish peninsulin. I don't know if you've ever heard that term before, but it, there is a reason for that. You know, it helps you to feel better because of all the different things that go in here, right? Garlic and onions. Yes, the garlic, those. the onion, the skelly, and the thyme, all those things that we talked about before. So, um, but it really, it really helps you, you know, so... When you're doing it, they say it's better to put the chicken in that has, you can mix it, because we're gonna put some chicken breast in there too. But it's good to have chicken with bone in it. Like, so like maybe like a chicken wing it or the drum it, you know, or maybe a part of the back. But sometimes people just cut the back off, the back of the chicken and just toss it, the part that has the ribs and stuff. Put those in there, not loosely, but so you can get them out if you need to. But when they say there's marrow in the bone and it boils in the soup, it actually helps you to feel a lot better quicker too so it's important not to just to cut off just the chicken breast alone and make it put a little bit of the, the the meat with the bone in it to help you with that whole healing process so i never turn down soup and I, you know in jamaica it would be weird for me to have super sunday dinner but i have had super sunday dinner living over here and i absolutely enjoy it and my kids would not complain if i was growing up i'd be like mom what is this where's the rice and peas and chicken or rice and peas and roast beef you know so we wouldn't we wouldn't do that down here but over here we do that i have it for sunday dinner sometimes like in the colder climate i mean a colder time not necessarily like you know in the warmer months so anyway let me move because you don't want to use like um the same cutting board for your meat as for your meats they always meat or that's for your veggies pardon me so he's going to be using this one to cut the chicken I'm going to give him some room so he can go ahead and do just that. Make sure you can see what he's doing. So let me get these out of the way over here. And it, well, usually I add just a little pinch of salt inside here. Not much because, you know, the um the soup mix, which is this is the one that we're using today. This camera always reverses so that you guys can see the word correctly. But like I said, you can use this one. You can buy these on Amazon if they don't have it at an international store near to you. You can get these or you can get the one that says um, chicken noodle soup or the one that says pumpkin soup, and you can use those. Well, not chicken noodle, hot soup. Not well, yeah, noodle. but I mean, it just depends on what you can get. But this is our first choice. No sponsorship here. It's just what we like to use. I'm going to just add a little tip of salt to it, but not a lot. All right. You can see the salt makes the water boil up a little bit more, so... Be careful when you're adding your salt to the hot water. So he's gonna go ahead and cut the chicken up for you. Put it where they can see you. They can't see you um up here. Okay. Take it over to that side right here. Okay, no, no, you can, it go. That's fine. You can put it right over here so they can see what you're doing right there. there All right, so I'm basically using um one half of the breast here. Right. And normally what I do is I mean I put the breast in last because the breast will cook faster. Right, you want the, 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 the chicken with the bone to go first, right? So I'll just take these and I normally just... He sticks the chicken bone, but you don't have to. That's just yeah. something that he likes to do. He says to get the you know the, the blood to run out of it, but Faster. you don't have to. It'll, it'll still cook in there anyway. Yeah. Let me take a look at the chat in the meantime here. Oh, so Stacy says, hello, Neil. So she's saying hello. Cheryl says, yes, Marlene. Oh, you said garlic is a must. That's right. And Cheryl says... Guys, even if you don't have anything to cook, just mince up some garlic and get some coconut oil. Wait till the oil is hot, hot enough. And um, what you said now? <laughs> then you put it in there to 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 fry it up. Oh, oh, okay. So, okay. So she said that even if you don't have anything to cook, just fry up some garlic and some coconut oil, <laughs> and people won't know that you know. And you don't have anything cooking that is so funny but i mean when we do it it's not like out of necessity it's just like it's something that i want to do like i feel for it you know what i mean in the future though maybe perhaps maybe later in the summer or perhaps um let me bring this over a little bit am i doing it the right way nope 
Yeah. So maybe in the summer or perhaps in the um in the you know fall or so on, we'll do like a cream of pumpkin soup that they had served to us at our wedding 25 years ago. They had served it to us and it was very, very good. And it does have heavy cream in there though, you know, to give it that nice creaminess, but I will definitely share that with you. So let me see now. So Stacey oh, so they're saying hello to each other there. And um, Mondale says, love love me a good soup. Oh yes, definitely. And Stacey says, growing up every Saturday, I used to have soup, yep. And that's what I was saying before. That's a big thing for us, you know, back in Jamaica. As you, Cause you know, the, the windows are open, the door is open. Some people, you know, you have your gates up so people can't just randomly walk in without opening the gate first. Or you may have like, you know, the grill work around your, your, your uh, veranda or porch as we call it over here. So the houses are open, the windows are open, the door is open. And when you're walking by, you can smell it. You can just smell people's food. And sometimes, sometimes when they're fancy, they be like, I smell in your pot, I smell in your food, the food smells nice. That's what they used to say to my mom time and time again, because you could smell it, you know, mm -hmm. and it's a typical smell. Sometimes we'll do like the chicken, you know, the chicken soup, chicken um, cock soup or chicken um, noodle soup, as the case may be. On occasion, you may do like um, red peas or really Beef. red beans with beef in it, that is really nice as well too. We'll probably do that at a future video when I'm featuring red peas or red beans, as we call them over here. So we're gonna do that as well too in a future one. So, but yeah, and I'm trying to think what else we'd normally cook as soup. What's the main two Pepper pot. Pepper pot, yes, but less, less of that. So we do goat. that sometimes too. Yes, and they might use a goat. Uh, use I won't a go on the rest of it. Something <laughs> might freak out. Yeah. Yeah, because I was like, yeah. you go with me to make the soup. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I'm not a part says, of it. I won't yeah. say what it is. So. Okay. <laughs> I use a lot of meat, like chicken breast, chicken back, neck, and foot. <laughs> Just look now. Yeah. Yes. Hey, the so chicken food has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of um, collagen heart. in there. Yeah, it's so like, good for especially you. women in the age group Ooh. like me, where you start to lose collagen because of your hormonal changes. Put your it's fingernails, good to have it. Your nails, your hair, your skin, you know, yeah. keep that elasticity going inside of your body because, you know, it recovers. So, a good tip, guys, you probably know this already, but when you want your pot to cook faster, just color it and it will cook a lot faster. So, our meat has gone in there and it's cleaning up everything over there. So, put, um, Eight wings in there, mm -hmm. and one and a quarter pound of the chicken breast. And I almost forgot our little friend over here. This one right here. How could I forget? Because I love to have a piece of corn in my soup. Yeah. So this, I'm just gonna. I like when it's you know like freshly shocked, shocked off of the um. Peel off. Peel off yeah, this, you yeah. take everything off. The pieces left, I can just take those off. But I love when it's like this, and we just pop it. Like pop it in two, or sometimes you may cut them smaller if it's a really, you know, big corn and put it in there as well. So anyway, so that is going. And of course, there's one more thing, which is something that you have to kind of make and you use flour to do it. And that is going to be some dumplings. Um, spinners. Well, spinners is more like for stew pieces, Stupid. smaller one. Yeah. We're going to be using flour, water and salt and you make the dough. And then you form them out and you drop them in there. So yeah, so that's pretty much. So we have a whole ton load of stuff that we're putting in there. I mean, if you might think, oh, you know, soup is kind of like you know poor people food or soup, you know, it's cheap food. By the time you add up everything, by them over here, it actually costs a lot. Just saying. <laughs> but you have to have the chicken, the yam right here, Cheryl. You're very lucky that you can get yam down there. I don't know if you guys can grow yam over where you are. Over your your um your farming area there, but like this, this costs a lot of money. How much per pound was it for this? Uh, four ninety nine. Four ninety nine per pound, and this is maybe like about three pounds. Or how much was this? Uh, let me, let me he went ahead and bought this. Bought this. He's better at picking on yams. Don't tell anybody I said that. <laughs> right. Let me see. As my grandma used to grow them. Uh, it's about four pounds. Yeah. So imagine how much money. How much did you pay for this? That must have been it. Don't tell me. <laughs> But that's why you have to make it stretch. You have to use it, you know, and use it and use it. And you don't need a lot. You can just slice a little piece off, you know, like so. Uh, but you're serving. Quarter of that is going in the soup, okay? <laughs> quarter. Yeah, so probably going to use maybe like some on here and that's it for the soup. And you know what we do with our yams so they don't spoil? We're not going to do it tonight, but we normally boil our yam first. We like boil it in salt water, of course. When it cools, we'll put it inside the refrigerator. 
So that way it can stay there and last for maybe like five days or so. So you're going to add a little bit when you warm up your food or you cook your food. You just warm it up in some um, some hot water. Some people like to micro microwave it, but we like to warm it up in some hot salt water. Very lightly salted. And then you have it, like you just cooked it and you have it with your food. So it has to stretch because it costs me a lot of money every year. So I'm just thinking, my grandmother used to grow so many, so much yam, you know, on her property. We used to sell yam. And look how much I have to be paying for it now. But, you know, that's just life. All right. So the water is boiling now. A lot of water in that pot. And if you can't fit everything, you don't want the pot to yeah. boil over. And you want to take out some of the water out of the pot? Yeah. And basically, what I'm, I'm going to do is basically cut off the toe of it. Right, you can cut all parts of it to let it grow, right? But I normally would cut all the toe of it, right? You can see it. Sorry, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cut off a, a part of it and then I'll just plant it that way. Yam typically, typically takes about mm, eight and a half to nine months to grow for yellow yam and so on. But like the other yams, like the St. Vincent and so on, they'll be a little quicker. So I'm going to be planting this in another, you know, very week, soon, another week or yeah, so. Very soon. <laughs> So I think the pot has a little bit too much water in here. So I'm going to go in and take it out. Take out some of the water. You can use, and use a broth for something else. Yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably um, boil some. Um, I don't know how much time we have. Because when I'm doing guys, I like to. um. Yeah, I think that's a better level right there. One more. Yeah, maybe we're putting a lot of stuff in this yeah, soup. This baby, and this one baby. Yeah, take, take one more. Yeah. And we can always add it back to it if we need to. So that's a good thing, you know. Lots of forgiveness in this meal here. And you know, that's why I try to keep my meals that I do for you guys as simple as possible. So that way, you know, you don't feel like it's overwhelming and that's something that you can't do. Okay, Pastor Juanita, welcome, welcome. Glad you could join us. She says, Soup is one of my favorite foods. Good to be here. Welcome, welcome. Blessings from the garden. You can cut it up in pieces, put a little oil on them, and place in the freezer. The oil prevents the browning color. Yes. Yes. What also prevents the browning color, too, is a little bit of um something mm. that has a little bit of um acid in there, meaning like your vinegar. It's a weak acid. So if you add a little couple mm. drops of vinegar in there, then that will also keep the, um, the color from changing, too. So that's definitely a good tip because... A lot of the stuff that we eat on here, and like I said, if you are diabetic, these are the better things to eat, like your green bananas, not ripe bananas. If you have any green bananas to show them, yeah. we don't put green bananas in soup unless it's like the one that you're making with goat meat. That was party soup, wedding and party soup. They cut the banana, green banana with the skin on it, and drop it inside those soups. So like these. And that's, and that's a goat soup. Goat soup. Yeah, yeah, not for this one. I'm just showing you, you know, how we use these things. So like I was saying before, like you have your green bananas. You have like your yam, you know, your yams, like yellow yam and those other yams. You have these, some people call them edibles, we call them cocoa. Those things, your body take a longer time to break them down as opposed to like, you know, there's a little bit of pasta, so they are so much healthier for you, especially if you're diabetic. Just don't have too, too much of it, but it works really, really well. All right, so let's turn this down a little bit. So next we're going to go ahead at this point, and people do their things differently, but at this point we typically go in and just add our, this in there is kind of waiting for you guys a little bit in case anybody came on and didn't get to see it. This is a um, one and a half, um, four, what, one and a half gallon size, what is that, six liters for my Jamaican people, my island right, people. Uh, six, 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 six quarts, liters. Six quarts. Six liters. I think it said it was six. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and add it in and again. When the water is boiling, add it carefully. We have our chicken meat in here already. And if you missed the start, you can always, you know, go back and watch the replay. Not everything, but you can go and catch the parts that you missed at the beginning. So because of the size of this one and a half gallon, we like to just put two packs of this in there to give it that nice flavor. My son was asking me, my older son was asking me earlier, he said, since you guys are on... Um, you know, do you have anything like if somebody doesn't want to use this, just do it everything off their own? You can use like garlic in there. It's not going to have the same kick, but you can put like garlic in there, you know, like garlic Fine. powder, garlic salt, and all the other spices, and it can oh, help yeah. out. But you typically, this kind of gives it a little bit of a kick, you know, when you put some kind of a soup mix inside here. And again, no sponsorship here, but that's the one we use. 
and you have like different types. So you can get these on Amazon. Like say you like you don't have an international market near to where you live, you can go on Amazon and you can get it there. So I think the next we're going to add in is our potatoes. And the reason why I added my potatoes first, and like I said, everybody does their things differently. We add these in next because I like that my potato is properly cooked out. And when it's properly cooked out, then it helps to thicken the soup. Because this is one of the easiest things to thicken your soup. Like the, the yellow yams or even you use white yam because they are they don't break down as quickly as this. They're not going to thicken the soup as quickly as you would like. I mean, there is some thickening that comes from it, but not nearly as much. So we're going to um, do the potatoes next. And these were washed already. They're clean, so we'll just go ahead and... I mean, I guess we can wash them again. It doesn't hurt. I've been touching the yam and everything. And I'm not trying to be cute, but I do have sensitive skin. And believe it or not, I'll do it. for some yeah. reason, potatoes. I can peel the potatoes, but I won't be able to peel those for sure. Because even though we like these, you know, the, the cocoa, or edos, as they call it, and the yellow yam, it can be a, it can irritate your skin if you have sensitive skin which i do i can't just peel them like that i have to put on gloves sad to say i have to put on gloves or i have to um you know like it on a paper towel so it absorbs most of the the liquid that comes out there i'm not sure if it's because there um it's something to do with nightshade plants nightshade plants are like potatoes same family as tomatoes same family as um eggplant same family as peppers. It's kind of weird that, you know, potatoes and peppers would be in the same family, but they actually are. They're called nightshade plants. And some people have allergies to them, to some of them. But I mean, it doesn't bother me. It just irritates my skin a little bit. It doesn't bother my stomach or anything like that. So I love me some potatoes. I like fries. You can beat the smell of fries. Oh my gosh, that's hard to resist. <laughs> you smell fries and you're just like, give me some. Even if you're, you just ate, you still want some, you know? So let's see what's going on here now. So she says, Cheryl, an idea. If you don't like the noodles, you can grind. Oh, Cheryl doesn't like the noodles? She says, I, I, only, I usually don't use the noodles, just the spice from the pack. Oh, OK. So Blessing from the Garden says, if you don't like the noodles, you can grind them up. It will help thicken the soup, yeah. Unless you really don't want the noodles themselves in there for whatever reason, then you know you could do what she says by grinding them up. or if you, like yeah, that. it could be, it could be, but yeah, you like she said, you can um sift it out, or like I was saying, you can sift it out, or you can um you can just grind them. And, you know, we have lots of things you can use. Or you have like like my little ninja over here. That's kind of big for that though. But, you know, like that you could use something like that. Oh, or the little bullet, the, the little bullet cups that they have. There are a lot of those out there now, so you can use those too. So you have many different options. Good old pistol and mortar. Pastor Wanita, I think I'm probably going to make some soup for you. <laughs> it's been in my thoughts. <laughs> Whenever I do see you again, I'll get you some soup. <laughs> here you are. All right, so some people use a potato peeler, but, you know, I just use my little, you know, a peering knife like this one here. And so he's peeling the, um, the what we call the cocoa, the edos right now. So he has those over there. And this is. Let me just show you how they compare. So you can see the colors. So the potato looks a little bit more yellow. I'm covering from the light right here. If I can. I Turn the light off. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be a bad idea. But anyway, the potatoes are a little bit more yellow. And these are a little bit more white. I'm not sure if you can see the difference. It's so bright. Oh, look, here we go. I got the right spot now. So you can see the difference. One is white. That one is the arm, the cocoa, the edos. And then you have the yet more yellow like potatoes over there. And of course, we're going to dice those or cube them, as we would say, and drop them in there. So he's doing one set and I'm doing the next set. What is Cheryl cracking up about now? <laughs> she says, y'all can keep cooking the good food. And and um, what is oh it's us alone eating this. <laughs> well, you know, sure. The reason why we do it because we try to encourage you one because you know this is always featuring some fruit or vegetable. The only time I put like a flower in there is like the special days, like we had the Valentine's um live Valentine's um special edition. Like those we have discussions maybe at Christmas time. You know, maybe like for you know Women's Day or something, you know. But other than that, we're typically um 
food. We're typically food. featuring some food or vegetable to encourage you to cook. And we show you how to do it. So you can't do it. even show it to you, you know? So we did. And if at some point in the future I decide to do a, like a recipe book or website for recipes or something, then you guys can always come back to the video and see step by step exactly how we did it. So we're peeling away here. We're almost finished with that part and I'm ready for these to go in. Fire started to, I mean, the pot has started to boil again. So I'm just going to wash this off and then get it nice. You want to show them how far you got to with the yam just to give them an idea? Uh, give me a second. Okay, he's working on the yam. I just wanted them to see like the thickness of the skin, like, you know, what it looks like. Or I can just show a cut piece right here. This is a part he says he wants to plant. I don't really want to plant. I want to sacrifice this much of it. I'm no, not gonna lie. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna oh, you're gonna take this. So. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So anyway, um, but yeah. I mean, like so that's what the skin pieces. looks like right Maybe there. More. And then you have um, I mean the yellow inside, and then you have the skin on the outside. <laughs> okay. And the reason I'm not showing the, 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 the peel of the yam is because some parts has a little bit of indentation because um when the farmers were digging into it. They were using like a stick to treat something like yeah, that. Yeah, get damaged sometimes. Like oh, when they're yeah. trying to harvest the yam sometimes, you know, that can happen. So, yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this half of it right here over in the next spot. So that way, if it doesn't thicken up fast enough, I can kind of shortcut it for you guys. I don't want to keep you too, too long, but I like when my soup, like it sits and then it just kind of like cooks and cooks and cooks. You know, like when you go on those road trips, like in Jamaica, if you've never been to Jamaica, try going to Arms. Um, it's been it's, it's still a thing. I don't even know, yeah. but they have all the highways down there now. You mm. know, like those roadside or even um, in your restaurant, you know, like going out to the country areas and so on. You can just go there and, you know, have some of their soup. And I'm telling you. When that soup out there, they've been cooking for a long time. Nothing like that. I'm not going to be holding that like that. We'll just go ahead and cut it. We have to dice them. All right. Whoops. Run away. Got it. Wash that one off. I don't want to cut them too small because these they cook out more easily. So I'm going to actually leave them in a little bowl and then add them in just a little bit later because I want the potato to cook out more than for that to cook out. Let me see. So she says, um, hold on now, Bruce, tomato soup. <laughs> I've heard of it. <laughs> hold on. What did Bruce say about tomato soup? I didn't see that part. I must have missed that in the chat. He said tomato soup. Yeah, there's tomato, yeah, some he says, do. tomato soup. I've heard of it, but how does it taste? Well, Bruce, you're gonna have to tell us how that goes. <laughs> I think that thing tastes like kind of tastes like ketchup, but mm -hmm. yeah, so like V8, but uh, yeah. not my favorite, <laughs> but it has its place. So, let me see, the there. yeah, and this, like I was saying, it's very nice and creamy when you have it. So, I just absolutely love to have it, love, love, love it. So I'm going to put it in a separate little bowl so that way I can add it into the soup a little bit later. And our pot's starting to boil up over here. So we are doing good. Yeah, he's doing, he's boiling all of the yam this evening pretty much. So you'll see some going into another pot over there. Because again, you know, you don't want to keep it for too long. And then I'm going to try what Stacy said. Put some oil on it. That was um, blessing from the blessing garden. From the garden. Okay, uh -huh. thank you. I'll, I'll try that. Yeah. I'd have to see how that looks because no, you just do it like when we're when you carry Aki over here. Oh Sometimes yeah. Sometimes you just put it in oil. So yeah, just go ahead and put that in there. And again, guys, remember that today the start of the show is our pumpkin. This is gonna be going in there soon enough. And this year I'm trying, we're trying really, really hard. Since enough of you are on the chat right now, let me just show you this right here. You have no excuse not to grow something. And I did a short video off, and it got a lot of views too. You have no excuse. These these um green onions right here, we replanted these. We had cut them off. You can probably see like a little slit right there. Another slit, like a little sleeve on it. And all we did really was just to cut the onion, um, the scallion. green onion, the scallion, like down to about here. And then make sure that the roots are covered in water, not too far up. And just leave them there. And in a couple of weeks, look at that. 
we can cut them again and then have scallion come up again. So, you know, it's something as simple as this. My sister, Andrea, she has some really huge ones. And you just put them in the water. You can see all the roots that they keep forming here. All right, turn them down, turn them down. Yeah, so um, you can grow it like that and it will be okay. We're also saving some seeds from all the different things that we're eating. Because why buy seeds when you can get them? If you get a really like good pumpkin, and that's what I meant to say, like this one here, you have the seeds in there. So if you get a really good pumpkin, it's like this one tastes really good. Just put the seeds to dry, you know, for maybe like a couple of days and then just plant them. If it's, if it's warm enough in your area, if it's not, don't plant them yet. They're a little bit first because they like warm weather. And then when you do that, you don't have to go and buy seeds or buy pumpkin because, you know, sometimes you see people buying like peppers. Sometimes I maybe but like buy one tomato, you know, just one. And I'll plant it. But the other ones, I figured that I should. Um... And I'm not going to be using too much of this. This is another thing again. And this doesn't spoil as easily, especially when you're doing it. What you can do is um, when you scoop out this part here because this has the seeds in it. Let me turn it uh, this way. Yeah. It has the seeds in there. So you can basically take out all of this part here because this makes it spoil a little bit easier. Because even if you look right, you can see it looks a little different in color, a little softer and, you know, more moist. So you could just scoop out that part, put it off to the side somewhere. And then when you do that, your pumpkin are um, last a lot longer. Some people, they call it squash. We call it pumpkin. And they always say the skin, the skin has a lot of good nutrients in there. So usually I just shred mine or dice them with it on there. But you just give it a good scrub first, which is what I'm gonna do. Another one again costs a decent amount of money. So yeah, so we had a little boil over there, but that happens sometimes. And of course you talk about all the benefits of having this. Yeah, I need to do. I'm not sure if it's um Latoya or uh Satoya that's on blessings from the garden, but she did do a pumpkin, like a pumpkin punch or a pumpkin drink at one point, and that was really good. So I think you're probably gonna try that for one of my um live videos with my own spin on it, of course. But I thought that was quite good. I think you had done like a couple different recipes of pumpkin. You can let me know if I'm wrong if you're still with me or you haven't gone to commercial because sometimes you'll cut in on that. So I'm going to be shredding this. Let me cut this up. We have a lot of different pots going right now, but it's okay. Let's turn this one on. All right, so here, put the yam in there. Now. I'm going to put just these potatoes in here so they can boil more quickly. Right. Oh, you got them small. So he cut the yam and he put them in there. So those are kind of like, those are little chunks. I like when they're a lot bigger for me personally, but it's okay. Because if you have like a cup of soup, sometimes it fits really nicely in there. So this is the size of the, um, the cocoa root that I have there. All right, so we're gonna get this to start. It smells so good in here already, guys. And guess what's gonna make it smell even better now? Let me add some of the thyme in there, yes. And these are kind of hard to catch. Sure, I agree with you 100% on that. What do you need? Which one? This bag? Sure, I agree with you 100% that the um, that the time is actually, it's not easy to catch. The easiest thing for, I mean, for us is either to buy a seedling from the, um, you know, like from your garden center or start it from seeds. seeds. You have to have the patience though, because if you start it from seeds, you're probably not going to get them to a certain height until perhaps the following year. If you're in like, Jamaica, which you are, or other warmer climates, and maybe later in the year, a couple months past, you can get to reap it, but it's gonna get colder here before they get big enough. So the following years when you get really get like a real nice bounty of time, but it is hard to catch. I will definitely agree with you on there. And that's why I said these usually have like a seedling, you got one, and then when you get the one, you can propagate it because it will spread a little bit. So you can just dig one up and put it somewhere else in a different container. And um, you could do it that way. So this is a nice little spring here. I'm going to just drop it in there. And that's going to make it smell so, so good. We get my wooden spoon. I'm going to add in all the spices now, one at a time. Just have a 
to start in a little bit. I'm going. And then like I was saying, if you don't have like the, um, the green onions or scallions as we call them, you can use onions or you can use both if you want. You can't have too much of those um, types of herbs in your, in your food. I don't think so. I mean, some people don't like spicy food, but I think most times it's because of the pepper that's in there that kind of like bothers them. And then what my mom used to do, I don't know if you guys did this when you're doing them, is you can just press it like so to flatten it out. I remember her doing that. Over here they'd say you're pulverizing. <laughs> you're pulverizing it. So now when you do it like that, everything comes up more easily and we just drop it in there like that. And then as it cooks, you know, it's gonna get softer and you can always lift them out if you want. It doesn't end up in somebody's food. Same thing with the thyme, you can lift those out. Especially if you're having like company, you know, somebody, um, you know, they're not like immediate family. You don't necessarily want to have like a big piece of scallion coming up in their food or a big piece of um thyme in there. So you want to, you know, just scoop those out before you give it to them. And a slotted spoon in that case is a very good idea because, you know, it, 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 it makes it easy. Yeah. Sometimes they'll use what they call like a spider for cooking and you can just scoop them out with that. Those are not easy. You don't see those everywhere though, I will say. Let <clears throat> me keep up with the chat here. <laughs> you use so you use the tomatoes like cut up loads of that in the water. I guess so, and you know, like the different spices. And Pastor Juanita says, My you and your husband work together so well, your marriage is truly a minister. Oh, thank you so much. You're always so thank sweet. You. Cheryl says, Good old pumpkin. Oh, yes, and it is so good for you. It really is. So I'm telling you. They say, you know, but they say, don't, don't sleep on that pumpkin because it tastes good and it's good for you. Next, I'm going to add in this right here, which would be the pimentos. You can add, you know, some people maybe add just a little bit, not like a whole ton load of them, but right here I have a couple. So just going to go ahead and add those in. If you're someone who doesn't want to see them in your food, you can go ahead and grind them out like with a peppercorn grinder and you can get the flavor just the same. But we normally just toss them in there. <clears throat> and this is a known thing. So if someone sees that in their food, they're not kind of like, what is this? You know, they're okay with it. So that's fine. Some people may use like a, a sachet. Um, mm, yeah, like a little mesh and yeah. they can drop it in there that way. So it just depends. What do you call it again? Some kind of, I forget what they call it. There's a term in cooking that they call it. I remember that when I used to do food and nutrition in high school, but was it bouquet something or other? I can't quite remember. But anyway, you can tie like different spices together and you can drop it in there that way. So that was our time. So let me see. So you still have a little habanero waiting over here. I'm not going to drop this in until everything has gone in the pot and then I'll put the habanero in because again, you don't want the pepper to burst unless you really, really love to have your food very spicy like that. You don't want it popping in there, especially if it's a scotch bonnet pepper, even worse. And as I always say, you know, just be mindful of the people that share the meal with you because it's not just, you know, what your taste is. <clears throat> they can always add pepper to their food if they want to. They can cut a piece of the pepper and just drop it in their own little bowl when they're done. You know, and if you're cooking for kids too, you know, you don't want to have it where they don't want to enjoy the meal because you want them to have soup because it's so good for them. So, so yes, guys, so we're going to see um, how this pumpkin is going to go, you know, when I've cooked it. I'm gonna also save, I'm gonna be using some just to boil it and see how it is. If it's a nice creamy texture, and I'm gonna, these seeds that I have in here, I'm gonna just take them out and see them. I'm gonna dry them. And then if it's really, really good, I'm gonna plant, plant them. If it's not, then I'll just kind of like pass it in the trash. So we'll see how it goes. So it's on, you know, because I do that every year. If I get a really, really nice one, then I'll plant them. So. So we'll see how it goes. Oh yeah, well just to show if anybody just came on, this is what we're using to kind of flavor it a little bit. But you can use different types and those are available at the international markets or you can get them, you can buy them on Amazon because pretty much most things are on there now. So yeah, whenever you're boiling these things, you just gotta keep an eye on them because they tend to run away sometimes. Put some oil in 
So I wanted to show you something because, you know, it's a time of year now. You know, Stacey, I know you guys is year on, pretty much year on um, planting for you. But for us over here, you know, we have to wait until the weather warms up a little bit, depending on where you live. And so um, we start, we try to start seeds indoors if we can, if we can, or even have the time. For it. But I just wanted to show you some seeds right here. This is how we are growing them. I'm going to have to see how they turn out, though, because you can see they're in this little dome right here. Um, it's in a little dome right here. You can see them. I'll just open it up for you so you can see how we did it. I did a short off of this as well, too, a couple weeks ago. These I have to see how they do. I'm going to um see how they are. These are tomatoes, but they look a little bit elongated because, you know, they were kind of like, they weren't in like area with grow lights, so they're a little bit elongated. So I'm gonna have to see how they hold up. I'm gonna just take them off individually because the seeds are still attached. I'm gonna put it in um in a different. It's okay. I'm gonna put it in a different, you know, like individual um containers with some soil and see how they do. If they hold up, if not, we'll just do another set again. But we kind of have to get started because before you know it, it's gonna be the springtime, and we want to transplant our stuff out. You know. When they're in at a large enough size because when they're very tender you tend to get more pests that come after them because you know they're easier to destroy so we kind of want them to um you know get to a reasonable height instead of straight from the seed as a direct so things like beans you know like your pumpkins those are okay you could just plant them directly in the soil but like tomatoes and peppers and some flowers you kind of want to you know a get a head start inside so we have our pumpkin here and we also have our carrot right here. I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up. Some people just yeah. wash them, but I like to scrape it off and then clean like that. So. so I'll be around there in just a minute. So we can put the um, little dumpling. Not yet. Mm, not yet. Because I have to get these in there. So there is our little carrot. If you can see it. So what I normally do is I shred some. I shred the smaller part, and then I'll dice the rest. Because you know, if you have too much of these things, you know, like your um the pumpkin and again, some people call this um calabaza, or we call it um West West Indian pumpkin. Sometimes they're kind of sweet a little bit. If you put too much in the soup, the soup is gonna be kind of like too sweet and you don't want your soup to be sweet like that. So we shred some and we dice some. And of course, if you wanna have a lot in here, you can always dice a lot more if you want, but that's kind of like how we do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and see which piece is the smaller one. I guess maybe this is a little thinner. And like I said, I just shred mine with the skin on it. Cause it's good for you. And this also has some starch in it, so it also helps to thicken up the food as well. And if you really, really love pumpkin, you can always go ahead and um, put more than I am putting in there. Yeah. It's so funny, like, you know, when you're, as a child growing up, there are some things that are just kind of like, this tastes so horrible. I used to hate pumpkin. <laughs> Andrew, did you used to hate pumpkin? I'm trying to remember because you like something that I did not like because you like boiled bread food and I did not like that. Yeah. <laughs> so remind me if you used to like um, pumpkin in your soup because I can't remember. Okay. I mean, I put any dice one in there because this turned out to be quite a bit, but you can put some in there if you want. Let me show you how much we have here. So this is how it's looking. No, I'm gonna dice the I'm sure the carrots just shortly. So this is what it looks like. Let me show you. See? Nice and rich and very colorful. So we're gonna go ahead and add that in. And the pot is looking so good already. It smells so good over there. Yeah, I think that's enough pumpkin. We're not gonna add any more. We can go ahead and stir it on in for me. Let me see how we're doing on the chat over here. So, let's see. I'm sure it's always cracking up. 
This Emeralds look like you can grow stone. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Cheryl, what are you saying? Tell me. <laughs> she's, she's talking about the growing seeds. <laughs> and she want to know what they call it. <laughs> Some people, they call it calabaza. Calab Let me see what this tag even said on here. What they said on here. Well, they call it pumpkin on here. So yeah, it says pumpkin. Like it, like it just it, says right. pumpkin on there, right? It's West Indian pumpkin. We just call it pumpkin in the islands. Or like I said, some people call it calabaza. Like if Deborah was here, she would tell you because, you know, she's from Puerto Rico, but she's not on this one, right? Or some people just call it winter squash. You may hear it referred to as winter squash because normally when you see these the most, it's like toward, like in the fall, like in October, that's when they really come up a lot. So, you, I mean, like even with the ones that they use for trick or treat or whatever, which we're not really into that, but um that's the time of year you normally see a lot of these. And I was so glad that my mom was able to see me grow them. She was just like, Marlene, those are looking so good. Like, I remember one year, it was just one vine, and I had like five of them. And one year, we, when we had traveled down there, we came back up a little bit late. So I planted it like in May, like late May. I'm just like, I'm probably not going to get anything. But I said, let me see what it does anyway. And I said to my husband, I said, you know what? I don't think we're going to get anything from this. And then I went out there one day by the bird bath. And I saw something under a leaf. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That year it only beared two pumpkins. No, three. No, just two. Just two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the one, the first one, the thing was as big as this. Yeah, it was about um about 20 about pounds. 20 pounds. Yeah. I'm not kidding you. And the flesh. See how thick the flesh is right here? The Twice. flesh of that pumpkin was like about Twice. this thick. Yeah. When I felt how heavy it was, I said to myself, this is probably not going to be good inside. There's going to be something wrong with this pumpkin. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It was the best pumpkin I ever had. It was just, it was I'm such sure a blessing. Blessings from the garden. That truly was a blessing, I'm telling you, because the thing was big, it was heavy, and the flesh was very, very thick. I just couldn't believe it. Because, you know, like it's sometimes, creamy, creamy too. very creamy, because, you know, like creamy. sometimes, dry, um, dry. Not yeah. watery. Because sometimes yeah. you see like a big fruit or vegetable, and then when you check it, it's kind of like hollow or something is wrong with it. That's why it's that big. But that one, Solid. it was perfect. I said, wow. And then I had another little one on the same vine that year. Came on, maybe it was like about two weeks behind that one in terms of size. It was maybe it grows to like about this. So I guess that one kind of like took all the energy and just kind of like put everything out there, which was perfectly fine for me. Mm -hmm. I shared it not with one, but two neighbors. And Three you, of us enjoyed that, our family and theirs. Crazy. No, no, I can I can try it. Yeah. I'm just trying to help you. It's okay. Let me go ahead and try it. These are the um the cocoa in here though. Yeah. Because I want it to be nice and creamy, but I don't want it to be, you know, cooked out too much. This will take about probably 15 minutes, so mm -hmm. once I do that, I'll so here are our carrots. We're going to add in our shredded carrot. And this helps it to cook faster too, you know? And when you've been cooking for a while, sometimes you can kind of like tell if your food, you know, if it's if it's, if it's coming out good based on just how it smells. You can tell, okay, that needs a little bit more salt. You can tell me if, you're, if you cook like that. You can say, okay, that needs a little bit more salt. But this is looking good already. I can't show you all the color, but it's coming along slowly. Oh, no, it's okay. I'm not going to do that. It's perfectly fine. Oh, the yam's doing over there. Yeah, See, even the yam looks nice and yellow already. Yes, yeah. And then, Let me wash these up. before we add in our pepper, our habanero pepper, we are going to add some corn in here. So, guys, if you just think got everything in there, and the last thing going to be some dumplings. You've got to have dumplings in your soup, man. And you'll see what those are. It's not like the chicken and dumplings that we have in southern food over here. I'm just going to pop these. So see, I'm going to drop them in here. There's four of us. Well, this person's not going to get a lot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it broke a little for the dump. Oh, well. I'll probably take this one. But anyway, right, corn. Good. No, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We're going to add some corn in there as well, too. And, you know, just to have more carrots, I'm going to dice the carrots that we didn't shred and put those in there, too. So tell me now, if you're feeling sick, you see all the things that I've put in here, if you're not feeling good and someone carried this for you, don't you think you're going to feel a whole lot better? Of course, when that somebody cares about you and they took the time to make soup, whether it's in the house you live in or somebody came and brought it for you, 
sometimes that in and of itself, when that someone cares actually makes such a very big difference in making you feel better that someone cares, right? But anyway, it's really, really good to have it, you know, when you're not feeling good or if it's cold out there. So we're going to have those cooking for a little bit. It has such a nice color over there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put the next one in. I'm going to try to break it a little bit further up this time. This is a little bit better. This is kind of like almost half and half. So see right there? I'm going to drop the other corn in there. Just trying to clear up over here a little bit. Let me take a look at the chat again with it. So let's see. Okay, so um, Papa Juanita says that they call it pumpkin in Barbados too. Okay, that's good. And so, <laughs> oh, Andrea says that she loved pumpkin. Okay, I could see why well, I'm not surprised. So you like pumpkin? I didn't. You like you like bourbon fruit? I didn't in my soup. No, but see, things change, and now I'm cool with it. Andrea says the color of the soup is so much richer, and I yeah. Oh, and you eat the skin, yeah. And it's good for you too. And um, Pat Juanita says pumpkin in Barbados too, yes. And um, Stacy says that was huge. It really was. And um, it was actually a rough time that we were going through, to be honest, when we had to go to Jamaica. I don't want to talk about it right now, but it was a rough time when we went down. And we got back late. Well, not late. When we got back, it was um, it was later in the season. But we said, you know what? We're going to go ahead and um, try anyway. Because normally over here, because I'm in growing zone 8, we normally put our things out. They say once tax day as packages is April 15. Normally 16. you're okay to um April 16. Yeah. Middle April. But either way, once you've planned your stuff out at that point, you should be okay. Because what happens sometimes as March comes around, and I have a video coming up next week. I have, Eddie, I'm gonna work on it um, for the next couple of days, but they're already started to put out stuff for spring, and sometimes people go out and they buy things that are not, not appropriate for spring. Mm -hmm. I mean, I shouldn't say that. They're not appropriate for colder weather, like tomatoes, for example, and they plant them early and then they go into shock. Right. So they'll start putting them out early when they really shouldn't, you know, unless you have like a greenhouse or you're going to keep them indoors in some grow lights or something, you shouldn't put them out yet because they like warm weather, you know, like tomatoes and like peppers. So like those, um, you know, they had them out as well. And I saw that, which I will mention that in the video when I do it. But anyway, um, we had put it out late because normally mid April is when you put out, you know, our seeds and, you know, seedlings or whatever. And this was like late May, you know. And so um, I'm just like, I don't know what's going to happen with this. But anyway, it worked out, you know. So we were quite happy about it. Um, it was very, very large. And we just kind of like call it a miracle pumpkin because it was kind of like an encouragement based on what we had to, you know, go down um, to Jamaica for when we came back. So that worked out really, 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 really well. So the grand finale will be the dumpling. That's what's going to come in here next. And my husband will do the honors. And then once that goes in there, then I'll go ahead and drop the, um, the scotch bonnet pepper in there. So basically, he's just going to be eyeballing it because we kind of like, we don't really measure like, you know, just to get the right consistency. So um you know we really don't like say a cup of flour to how much water or whatever we kind of which i mean at some point we probably will try to um see if we yeah, can if we're doing a book we're measure it measure yeah you like measure them out to see exactly like how much you would need but since you're watching you can just kind of like that idea of the consistency what it would turn out to be right, so basically put like about a, a cup and a half of flour right and so this here it doesn't have to have a lot of salt because the soup yeah. has a lot of salt in it already. Right, so I put a half teaspoon of salt. And like Marty was saying, you know, really add salt per se if you don't want to because the uh, soup already has the salt in there. So, okay. Pastor Juanita, how are we looking? Tell us how the soup looking. Does it look like something you might want to have some of? <laughs> Let me know. 
Let me know. And some people, they might use a fork to do it. But, you know, most of us, we just use our hand, you know, to get it where you can just show them over a little bit what the dough looks like, what you're doing so far. Let me look at the camera so they can see it right there. So you don't want it to be too stiff. You don't want it to be too sticky because if it's too sticky, then um, what happens is it's going to stick to your fingers and you can't get to get to make the um, get to make the dumplings. But if it's when too, you're doing this, please. Okay. Please, please, please. All purpose flour. I remember one oh time we made it and we had Ooh. we did not read a label. And that <laughs> thing was surprising flour. We had some very light dumplings. They were floating. It was like it was like Let me Noah, show. It was like Noah's Ark. That's a very good call. Very good call. Let me show you. I know y'all probably know what it looks like, but you know, we have beginners sometimes just trying to do something, right? That is a must. It has to be. You know, this is the wall. My friend sometimes will buy like gold medal, will buy, you know, which other one again, Pillsbury, whatever. Yeah. This one costs less. So, hey, that's what we got. But anyway, it needs to say all purpose flour. If it says self rising flour, that's for frying dumplings. That is not the one for you. It has baking powder. That happened to me already too, but it's because I was at someone else's house. I was staying here for about a month or so. And I didn't bother to read the label because my mom never used to buy self-rising flour. She always bought all-purpose flour, right? Sometimes they call it counter flour in Jamaica. Same thing, right? So, I mean, I assume that this person did the same thing that my mom did, but she did not. So I bought, I got it and I made the dumplings. I was like, ooh, I'm making dumplings, you know, in America, da -da, whatever. But all of a sudden, I saw the dumpling just rise to the top. I'm just like, what is going on with this dumpling? What does it look like this? And I said, let me go take a look at the floor. I'm going to look at the floor, and it said self-rising. I'm just like, Because, mm -mm. see, you use self-rising floor if you want to when you're making, like, fried dumplings, right? Or, you know, like, you know, cakes. festival cakes or whatever, because it has baking powder in it already. Right. But when you use all-purpose all flour, you have to add in what you need to it. And then when you add in what you need to it, you know, this, this side is going to be really high, raised up or not, right? So you decide how you want to do it. But with self-rising flour, mm -mm. that would not be the one for you. <laughs> she cracking up over there. Sorry, Donna. <laughs> I think I'm missing some of the chat here, guys. Please excuse me. Um, oh, so let me see you now. Cheryl says, oh, Cheryl says, I realize that you shred the carrots. Yes, I do. Because it helps to thicken it up and it goes quicker too. So, you know, I just like it that way. And Andrew says, yes, I had COVID-19 last summer. And Marlene and Neil had a steady stream of soup every day that kept me healthy and strong. Yay! That was such yep. a blessing that we were able yep. to do that for you, you know. But, yeah, it really, really helps you. So, um, Jared said, roasted breadfruit. Yeah. No, no, it's boiled breadfruit. Boiled oh. breadfruit. No, so no, yeah, yeah, we... yeah, you have to, because usually the one that is more full like it's almost about to ripen that's the one that you roast and then you fry it or you just eat it roasted like that but when you're doing the ones for soup it's the one that's a little bit younger it's you know almost kind of like green you know tender not as starchy or not tending towards being slightly sweet and then that's the one that you would normally um put in no, the soup. sweet is not yeah, you don't yeah, do sweet. sweet. Yeah, we don't uh, like sweet breadfruit. Nah. It's almost about to get yeah, sweet. sweet. The younger you ones, drink. you know, they're just definitely young and they're smaller inside. You maybe like about like so. I don't know what it's usually like about so because it has gotten more mature. And then that's what they put in there. But you know, Andrew really used to like it. I did not. I kind of it has kind of grown on me a little bit, but not so much. But you know, things change with time sometimes. So let me see. Yeah, I'm gonna make them. Don't, oh, yeah, sure. Um, show, show them how you make them. I'm going to make them small. I'm not going to make them like how I do back here. Cartwheel. My little cartwheel is going to be like a boat. A boat. It's going to be about this big, like a puller. But um, That's when the men cook it together. Yeah, but we, we'll, we'll, we'll do it decent, right? We'll just make it like that size, right? We need for it to fit in our bowl, okay? <laughs> 
when they make them that big, it's like when they really want to call a boat back in the islands where this means that they're out working, you know, like, you know, doing work on a house or property or whatever, you know, sure. building stuff. And then they, you know, they cook food in like a big, um, big keg or whatever. And then they make the dumplings really big, but that's probably like a plate of food. So it kind of like, you know, it doesn't, it, yeah. you have space for everything to spread so out. That's sure. a good size. Yeah. Like right here. See, just fits right in the palm of my hand. I have long fingers. They can see. It's not like, you know, it's not huge or anything. But, you know, it's kind of like a little bit of a skill to make dumplings. I remember it took me a while to learn how to do it. I'm not going to lie. So let me show you something. All right. Do the spinners now. No, not spinners. They're too small. But okay. So if, you, if you're not good at making the regular dumpling, just do it like this. You know, roll it around, roll it around, roll it around. And then you just do it like so. Yeah. So you make a circle. It's a carrot. <laughs> it's going the same place. I know, I know, I know. But just for appearance, since I'm just roll it in a ball like this. Roll it, roll it, roll mm -hmm. it. And then you just roll it long ways. It's kind of like you're making like what they call it now, like um play-doh, like play-doh, play right? Yeah. And then you shape out like this, right? Right. So that so and you just put make, it in there. Make, Let me make you it can see it's long, long ways. Yeah, that looks so like you a, want it to have a little bit that, of sauce. It's not a spinner's dumpling, man. Look, <laughs> Some, can you talk to him for me, please? Somebody talk to him. Spinners is like this size, right? Spinners is like this. It looks okay. even is smaller it, than it, that it, sometimes. It, this size, please. No, that's yeah. too small. No, no, no. You are, you are, people <laughs> see that, they will be like, oh, here go with that small. <laughs> so anyway, because when you're having your soup, you want to have something that you're going to cut into with your spoon. Mm. You know, you want it to have some bites, as they say, bite. Mm. Like when you're eating something, you have a little bite to it. So, you know, I mean, no worries. I mean, you know, you're cooking it for yourself. You know, the people you do it like this. That's perfectly fine. Uh, Drop it okay. in there. I'm going to eat that one. Yeah. I'm going to have that one. Uh, like an egg. Stir around the pot to make sure. How many dumplings did you get in here? <laughs> I'm go probably six. So I'll, do, I'll do like two more. Normally we do a lot of, lot of eggs. Normally we do like about probably 12, 14. Because, you know, we have some left over for next day for lunch or something like that. For the pot, and it's be mindful of the pot, that's why I didn't do as many. Yeah, because I would say we could add the water back to it if we wanted to. Something stuck at the bottom here, it's okay. It's probably some of the, the potatoes at the bottom, which is good. Yeah, so it's sticking in. So I, I had boiled one over here, a couple of them, actually. well, just a piece. Let's see which one is it. Just half of it. But I don't even think I'm gonna need to add it in here because the soup is getting so thick, I wasn't sure how it would cook out. But it's really nice and thick, and that's how I like my soup to be. When I say thick, I don't mean like a puree, but I just mean like not runny like a broth. I like for it to have some body to it, and that is what the potato does. Okay, so I'm gonna or I mean, the, the, the malanga or the edo or cocoa mm -hmm. will do the same thing. Thank you. Yes, I was gonna I was gonna mash all the um the potatoes in here, but I don't need to do it. Oh, it's looking so good already, guys. You probably can't see it from over there. I don't think so. But... I'll bring the computer phone. No, don't do it. That's fine. Yeah. I can just hold it over something and show them. We don't need to move it. Don't move it. Don't move it. The lighting. The lighting. It's okay. Okay. So, you they can't, can't see, see that. No, that's a brown spoon. It's not going to show in the brown spoon. See there? That's how it looks right now. So, it's getting a little bit thick right there, which I like. Let's put that right back in here because our dumplings have to cook. Yeah, well, so my mom normally minutes. says, um, my mom normally says like 15 minutes. Yeah. It's fine flour dumplings, you know, when you make your dumpling with flour, it cooks quicker, but the water has to be boiling first. So it is boiling right now. So we're going to go ahead and cover it. So... And I just tasted some. And it's tasting so good. All right, so let me get this out of the way. So I, I think we can drop in our pepper right now, right now, guys. No, what do no, you say? No, no. Not yet. Wanted to cook a little bit yes. more. Okay. Give it, give it like five minutes to go. Otherwise. Because I want to make sure it kind of like sweats a little bit in there. Yeah. It's looking so good. And since we're talking about planting stuff, I um just wanted to show you here these. 
And I encourage you to do the same thing as well too. So like right here, these are like bell peppers that we saved. So they are dry on this little dish right here. And we're gonna go ahead and plant those. You know, we're gonna plant these. Because, you know, you save yourself some money. You know, why are we trying to just go and, um, you know, like pay like um, $3.99 for one pepper plant? Or a 99, depending on how big it is sometimes. If you start them early enough to the seeds, you can just go ahead and you plant them. And I'm gonna do a video um in another two or three weeks. It should, should be reasonable enough based on because some people they even though it gets it's okay here mid-April for us to transplant those stuff. Some people still a little bit later, maybe like the end of the month, but it'll still be okay. But just to show how to plant some of the different seeds, but you know, save your let's say like food scraps, basically food scraps. You just you know plant the seeds, seeds. and then right stuff. here my husband you like this thing called bitter melon that's his chinese heritage coming up there because you know he's part chinese this is a seed from the bitter melon right here that thing tastes horrible but i'm guessing it's good for you like to you know ra fine. raise your body ph which is really good for you so that's going to be his thing that he can enjoy i have one little piece of it's like that's enough for me i don't need any more and if you hadn't seen it before, I just wanted to show you these, you know, for those who really want to try something. This is one of the easiest things you can do. See, just a little small container right here. Like I said, you cut them off to about down here. And just make sure that um, the part that you cut, that like the little sleeve part right there, that that does not go below the water because it will spoil it. And you just put it in water. And you do need to change your water. So if you're trying to grow them like this, change your water about twice per week. Because it will start to go bad, you know, like you may smell it smelling a little bit off. But whatever it is that you're growing in water. So you want to change your water twice per week. And then you can, you know, you can grow something. It's very easy. Andrew, you have some really nice ones over there. And I showed you the tomatoes earlier that those were coming up there. And I just want to encourage you. I just want to show you my little basket from today. This is kind of heavy. Oh, yeah. You need help? No, they're fine. It's a nice little basket right here, just to show you. Can you put the timer on there? Yeah. Oh, okay. 10 minutes. Just to show you, you know, that we're trying as much as we can to eat healthy, as my brother always says, and it shows it in the studies as well, too. Say hi to him from Cheryl. Um, with Tiffany, Tiffany, what you're cracking about? I'm gonna have to go back and go look. But anyway, um, as you would say, you know, the less footprints that you have from the farm or the garden to your plate or garden to table, the better the food is being. So when the food is like over processed, to go through all these different steps, then it's the less you're getting from there. So you see, we have like a healthy little balance right here. You know, we have our apples, and I like to have organic apples. These are pink ladies. We have different types sometimes. I'm missing all the laughter over here. <laughs> she said me and these and like, like he's on site, like a work site. <laughs> that is true, but that's how they did it though. Cause you know, he used to work with the um company down, one of the utility companies down here. So, you know, they go out sometimes and they're on their different, you know, um, trips around the country and everything. So, you know, they kind of had to cook out there sometimes, depending on what they were doing. You know, they didn't want to eat at a restaurant. So, you know, they know how to run stuff like that. So let me see now. Um, she says, Cheryl says, my stepmom used to put it like a little dimple in the middle. Yeah, she's trying to be all cute, which is fine. Sometimes you do that, but, you know, I, I don't even bother with that sometimes. But I know what you mean. It makes it look cute. No, it's, make, make, no it's to make sure that it, it boils through. Because yeah, it will. It, it will. Yeah. In the water, it it's will. make it boil quicker. Uh-huh. So um, she said, Sheffington, he's a Sheffington. <laughs> so Cheryl says, yes, I see. When you put it in the bowl, we'll see. So Cheryl says, sometimes I put a little piece of butter in. Yeah, you can too, yes. but you don't yes. have to though. Because yeah. and the reason why I say so is because we put the chicken in there with the skin on it. So you have like the chicken breast. And I was talking about the importance of when you put the chicken in there to make it um, like, you know, chicken soup to feel better. It's good to have a piece of some of the meat in it that has the bones in it in the chicken, the chicken with the bones in it wow. because the marrow in the bone, they say kind of helps with some of the things that help to make you feel better. And again, back to the same terminology in Jewish peninsula, and that's what they call chicken soup. 
I don't think they make it the way we do in Jamaica, but it's going to be close enough to it, right? It's similar ingredients. So, so yeah. So, uh, let's see now. So, um, so Jared says, grown is greater than bought. 100%. Jared says, hear her again, Stacey. She's going to plant bell peppers, telling she can grow stones. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you need to check out Stacy and this is from the garden because I mean no, they could grow anything. They could grow from stones. Oh my, yeah, they could grow yeah, stones. I, I, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I, I really, you're growing a lot of good stuff. Yes, you and the way they do it. I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm really proud of seeing all you guys mm -hmm. doing everything. Yes, you're trying everything. You know, and there's another new channel to it. Uh, we call it now farming on the rocks. Mm -hmm. Not a very good one again too because. They use mostly containers, you know, our yeah. small spaces. And when you see the things that they do with it, oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah. we really have no excuse to grow stuff. So Tiffany, let me see. So Cheryl says, oh, Tiffany over there, dry cracking up, uh, Tiffany cracking up. Tiffany says, I'd, I'd absolutely love to start a garden someday. But don't make it one day. You can do it. You know, you can do it. You can do it this April, middle of April. You can start. Just grow one thing, you know. Start off with one thing, and I would encourage beans, you. Yeah, beans. well, beans kind of need more than a little pot, but you beans is an easy thing, very rewarding because I'd say if you can get like a um a container, like a little plastic container from the the um even the dollar store, but make sure it has holes in the bottom. If you don't have holes in the bottom, you have to carefully put some holes because the water has to come out, right? And just throw a couple of beans in there. You know, if you have a size maybe like say about like so wide. Like a five-gallon bucket. Yeah, you could maybe put maybe like about um, I'd say maybe about seven seven different beans seeds seeds in there, and that'll be enough. You'll probably need to get like maybe a stick or you know a stake or something so they can run on it a little bit or just to kind of like lean it up a little bit. You can start off with that. Um, that's really the easiest thing yeah, to start. And if you do that and you get success, day. you will feel so encouraged to try something else like tomatoes or peppers. But I'd say start with beans first. Okay. Tomatoes, little pot, tomatoes are harder. It should be good. Yeah, tomatoes are harder. I will say yeah, that for yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. It's not that hard, but I wouldn't say make it the first thing because if you don't have success with it, then you're going to be like, ah, I can't be bothered. Yeah, yeah, and then people give up. <laughs> <laughs> This is from the garden. Yeah. It says we grow scallion like that, but we put them in dirt instead of water. Each time we cut them, we grow exactly, and that's what yes. I was saying because these are yeah. gonna get cut sometime this week. And the reason why we do this is because it's too cold outside for us right, right now. You know, for us to grow them out there or so, it's just like okay, it's too cold outdoors, we'll grow them indoors. So that's what we did. And you know, I have my hydroponics hydroponics growing system with this. Can we bring it around here and show? Up? Yeah, the reprogramming. That's gonna Absolutely. be a lot. It's okay. Right. You know, but anyway, um, I've reaped so many herbs from it, and it is such a good one. If you haven't seen that video yet, I have two different one one showing the actual setup of the hydroponics growing system, and one it says zero to thirty days in the uh, um, and you can see step by step exactly when you start from just one seed, and it grew up. I've been reaping so much of those herbs. I'm telling you, it's an endless supply, especially like the cilantro. Like every two days, I have to go and reap some of the leaves off of there. You know. And, you know, they got it to me to promote it for them. Well, not to promote, but yeah, I guess to review for their product review. They had sent it to me. So, you know, there are different benefits. Mm -hmm. and you're going to have to hold it carefully. This is the back of it, but that's okay. Yeah, you bring it in. around. Bring it in. No, it's okay. Um, yes. Can you guys see it? So that's why it's looking right here. Careful with the soup. Yeah, uh, the we'll, be, we'll be cooking it. <laughs> don't tilt it around. At the no, 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 no. Like, the water is inside of yeah, it. Yeah, that's why I'm saying don't tilt it. Um, so turn it this way. You see that guy? Look at this. This is oregano right here. Isn't that something? This is the grow lights. It's off because he plugged it out, so it's not on anymore. My son will go ahead and but look at this guys. Oregano. And I'm telling you, we made some um chicken parmesan the other day and we put some in there. It was one of the best ones I've ever had. This is basil right here. Look at that. Can you see it? And this is after I had cut off the I cut off cut off the top and it's springing up again. Yeah, I cut that one. It's yeah. Broke. My sister had some of that too. Look at the cilantro, guys. Look at that. Every time I read them, this is the top of the grow light right here. I read them and then like in two days they touch it again. The stem is so thick. Look at that. Yeah, it almost looks yeah, like Yeah, this a, is what my people like on my live video gets to see. Close up of all of this, you know? Yeah, that comes that way. You go in the wrong direction. Yeah. So right here you can see let me all right, pull turn, up. turn around that way. I'm working him, aren't I? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, where is it now? 
Uh, it's right there. You're touching it. Yeah, right here. So, shift it that way. So you can see. This is almost like a stalk of celery. And this, what is this growing in? Water. Water and plant food. That's what's in there. It's about a third right, a third right now. Mm -hmm. refill it. So I, I, I am so happy they sent it to me. And I have no regrets. And honestly, I mean, there are different prices that they have for those. They have like era mm -hmm. gardens and stuff like that. But I would say I would encourage you definitely. You know, you can try. You know, try with that if you want. But, you know, that is going to be a little bit of investment. But it's here to last for years upon years upon years. Okay, so let me see. Now I'm calling up on the chat here. So Tiffany, start with one container at a time. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Doris Bryant. Welcome, welcome. I'm not familiar with your name. We're so glad to have you here. We are featuring our pumpkin today. You can always go back and watch the replay if you like. But we're featuring pumpkin today because we try to, you know, use for the just for the live videos, though. I don't really cook on my regular videos, but for the lives, we try to feature a fruit or vegetable. On occasion, we may do like um a specialty one, like a Valentine's Day just discussion, but typically this is what we do. And um to encourage you to, you know, to grow things, or if it's you know, you bought it from the market, but just to have things that are more, you know, natural, not as processed you know, for healthier living and just, you know, try to grow something for yourself. So the soup is pretty much almost finished here. We have a minute and a half left to go, but I do want to welcome you and so glad that you came to join us today. And if you haven't subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you get off of here so you can be notified Pepper. of all the different ones. And I only have, what is that? <laughs> okay. So I have, um, yeah, I'm seeing eight thumbs up. So I'm, it's probably cut to commercial. I suppose. But anyway, um, eight thumbs up. So if you haven't given me a thumbs up yet, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. Because what happens is that when you do that, it sends a good signal and then it ends up going out to more people. But he's saying, oh, we almost forgot. Got to put our habanero in there. So we're just going to drop it in there. It needs to be in there for a while. Just hold a minute. I'll be fine. I'm going to stick it further down yeah. in the pot. You almost, it's not gonna stay long. It's I know, I'm just gonna like immersing it though, so it's immersed a little bit. Pop yeah, it's not gonna pop it at this point. It's really tough, but it's looking so thick and nice, guys. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. It tastes good too. <laughs> so I know, so Cheryl, your words catching up on us now, because Cheryl said we're always cooking all of this good food. <laughs> I'm not giving her any. Right, oh, what. Doris Brand says, let me see. She says, awesome. Uh, she says, Cheryl sure, says, awesome stuff, guys. Doris Brand says, great. I watch your videos. Okay, I am a subscriber. Right. Okay, well, thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to us. And we hope that they help you in some way, you know, when you watch the videos. I'm glad you took the time to come in and be a part of the chat. Because sometimes if we don't, because I don't like going and like see, you know, like, how many subscribers, you know, like the names or whatever. So I honestly, not, I'm not sure. But when people leave me a comment on the videos, then I know for sure that this person, right. you know, more than likely would be a subscriber. So we certainly um, appreciate that. Right. So, so the timer went off, but we need to have the pepper just, you know, kind of yeah. steam down a little so bit more inside second. there. So we'll give it a little bit more time. I'm going to let them see it. Remember, the part. card is banded up. So there's a lot of light coming over here. So you can see, because I want to burn my hands. That's why it's looking inside the pot right here. So you can see it there. All right. I think they got it. That's a good close-up. So the pepper is sweating right now. So Cheryl says, um, nice, Doris. You have my grandma's name. Oh, that is so nice. Yep. <laughs> I remember when my, I used to listen to like um, Doris Day when I was growing up. I didn't know about Doris. I'm aging my. I'm, uh, what do you say now? Um, telling your age. That's what they normally use again. Yeah, I guess telling my age, whatever. But yeah, but I was in my mom's time. But I certainly, um, I certainly um, remember them talking about um, Doris. Day. She was one of those big time actresses. Yep. Yep. So pepper is starting to sweat. So it's kind of like you know a little more soft. We so you know that it's kind of like seeping out the juices which is what we want. We don't want it to pop. Again, guys, don't let your pepper pop. If your pepper pops. Yeah. Got a spoon. Sticking at the bottom. bottom. Nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting thick down there too, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off now. I think we're good. 
This thing is so nice and thick. Cheryl, don't hate, okay? <laughs> All I can say is I wish you were here because I tasted some a while ago and then I washed off the, the fork and it tasted so, so good. And it's really at the pot bottom though because it's actually sticking at the bottom. But anyway, you know, this is a nice little um, arrangement over here of fruits. This is what we encourage, you know, try to have as much natural fruits, you know, in your body, get a lot of vitamins, minerals, you know, fiber, lots of fiber, especially like apples. Apples are very good for you. That's saying that they say an apple a day keeps a doctor away. It is for a reason because when you eat these and you're regular, as I said, covers a multitude of sins. You know what I mean? That's just an expression. But anyway, um, but it's good to have, you know, like different ones. You may not like some of them, but there has to be a couple of them. Most people like pineapples unless I've heard of pineapple allergies, which is rare, but it could be. You have plantains right here, which is similar to bananas, but you have to fry them so you can see that this is a lot bigger there. Nuts. Yeah, we have like nuts right here. And they always say like eat from you know, different colors across the color spectrum, you know across the color spectrum. You have your reds, you have your oranges, you have your yellows. And they also say, you know, which of course the pumpkin is a big part of that, you know, the nice color there, vitamin A, vitamin um, C. But don't forget your white, your white vegetables. They're, they're very important too. So like your onions, your garlic and your scallion, those are very important as well. All right, so I think we're gonna go ahead and share out some of this soup right now. I'm trying not to keep you as long as the, the last live was really long. <laughs> and it makes it, you know, people um, on the replay just kind of like, oh my gosh, that's really long. But, you know, I try to give you good information so you'll see that it's worth your time, you know, worth sharing with someone else. You see this now? Now, this is looking like a soup kitchen. I have a smaller one, but <laughs> that's the one we're going with today. I'm going to take out the, the piece of corn first. I'm going to put like a drum it in there. And I really don't mind like if I get like some of the um the pimento seeds in there. I'm pretty much okay with that. And a nice little piece of yam. You cut them a little bit smaller than I would have wanted, but that's okay. You want? I can give you a big piece to put in there if you want. No, well, yeah, probably do that off camera. <laughs> Guys, can you tell? Let, let me tell you something. I love yams, but yellow yam? Mm. That's all I can say. I love yellow yam. So here's a spoon, and it's gonna cool down. So um, let me get this out the way if I can do it carefully. Was. I'm just going to run down the list really quick of the things that we put in there. So some of them may have been put back, put away at this point, but anyway, just to give you a quick rundown of some of the stuff. I think we use up all of the um the the edos or the, the malanga. But anyway, um, so first thing is this soup mix, the cock soup, or the hen soup, they call it that sometimes. You may, you may get, um, and these are, you can get these at the international market, or you can get them like um, online yeah. from online. Amazon. We put the root in there as well. Some people call this malanga root. It's round, the more rounded ones that's rounded, like just to here, they call those cocoa or edos. We had um, potatoes in there. I did not use any onion this time, but if you don't have like green onions or scallions, as we call them, we're growing these, you can use onions. Thyme was definitely a must. Of course, we have our pumpkin, if I hadn't said that before, which is the star of the show. We had the pimentos, and so this is kind of optional. You don't have to have that in there. We had our yellow yam, which is one of my favorite yams. Come on, take the cake for me. And we had our corn in there. You saw the corn just now. And of course, a little bit of salt to taste. This typically has enough salt. You can always add a little bit more if you need to. And that's for the most part what it is. So this is what, oh, this is kind of warm. I need a little um way to put it on. Yeah. So 
here it is, guys. Our soup. Whoops. Yeah, it's okay. Not turn I'll just, over. Just <laughs> there it is. Let me show you the thickness of the soup. See, that's how we want it to be like that. That is what we want. I don't like it. My soup is runny at all. Unless it's meant to be like a broth. You can put it back. Unless it's meant to be a broth. So we had the cock soup, thyme, pepper. Um, the scallions are green onions, as we call them. Yeah, potatoes. We did put some garlic in there, too, which that's optional as well. We had corn. We had the dumplings. We had the cocoa, pimento, and salt. So let me take a look at the comments to see where we are now. And just says anytime Doris says I have met a lot of people named Doris. Well, kind of that's kind of like my name, Doris. You know, my name is an older name. When I was in um like primary school in Jamaica, there was like let me see, two other people with that name. And then um when I went to college, there was one other person with that name. And usually when since I've you know come over to America now, most times when I meet Amarlene, she's a lot older than I am. She's maybe like about 20 years older than me, honestly. It's an older name. But it came from the movie star Marlene, Marlene Beatrich. I should be aware of her, but that's where it kind of the name. Yeah. But it and really Doris, it means Mary Doris, yeah. Magdalene. You know, the two words put together, Mar from Mary, Lean from Magdalene. So anyway. If you care about that kind of thing. But anyway, <laughs> it's an older name. So, you know, you not find a lot of people with that name, but it's a beautiful name. I yep. love it. Yep. I really do. Yep. So um, let me see. Now. So Stacey says, my aunt was Dor, but I called her Doris. When I saw Doris enter the live, my heart skipped a beat. Oh, I love her so much. She's resting peacefully. Well, may she good. rest in peace. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a good sign, right? We, we don't ask for signs, but it says if I, signs follow them that believe, right? So Amen. that's probably a comfort to you right there. So, um, so Cheryl says she was a gem. Doris, oh my gosh, love her dearly. Tell me, trust me, Stacy. You notice I say I love her as if she's still here. Miss her bad. Cheryl says I am. I put a green and ripe pepper, and I sometimes what cook the right one, or do you mean you eat it? I'm not sure what she meant by that. It's probably a typo. So Stacy says Cheryl, yes, you can definitely relate. Just give it a little buzz. Oh, you're talking about the pepper. Yes. Yeah, I know he likes pepper, my brother. You say sure say she's a hater, right? No, she's a hater raider. <laughs> it's okay. You can make some. You probably won't make it tomorrow, but because it's a Sunday tomorrow, but you can always make some. And then Dari says it looks delicious. Thank you so much. And guys, you know, you know, the videos are there. You know, if you haven't seen them yet, be sure to check them out. These wonderful ladies. I always give a shout out to my ladies on here who have channels as well. Andrea's Kitchen Time. She, she's been doing some shorts, but she needs to do some regular videos. So she says those are coming. We have Gardening with Stacy, wonderful um, container gardening in Fort Moore, Jamaica. We have Blessing from the Garden. It's two mm -hmm. sisters. I hope I'm not saying one of the names wrong. Latoya and Satoya and their little daughter, um, one of their daughters, um, Jojo. They also do containers, and you know, like in their backyard gardening as well. Lots of fruits and veggies there. Um, Mondel was on here from Johnson Home Decor. Pastor Juanita, I think she might have gotten off, but she is from um, Rock of Faith Deliverance Temple. That's actually a um, faith-based channel. So I really hope that I got everyone that was on here that actually has oh, a gosh. channel. Yeah. Yeah, so we certainly appreciate you guys. So we normally take a little picture at the end. I don't know. We're gonna do this because it's soup. I don't want to <laughs> tilt no, it no, over. No, but it's okay. <laughs> just come on over. All right, I'm just hold the thing. So check the give videos out, guys. Share them out. <laughs> Here we go. Share them out. You know the All ones right. that came out recently, and I thank you so much for your support. I truly appreciate it, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the evening. Hope you had some nice dinner. Right, and you can try this out. You can share it out. Especially like people learning to cook. Yep. That's why we do these, you know, or trying something different. And of course, Andrew's channel is there. So there's all of that. So we thank you so much. And um, listen from the garden. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at your pumpkin video again to see yeah. how you made your drink because we used to make them too, but you know, maybe a little spin on there. And be sure to give me a thumbs up, if, you know, even after the live ends because you know it helps. Send it out to other people as well when it's over. Next time we'll do um, the carrot juice. So let me yeah. see what she's saying. Lucy says, pass through the screen. No, we can't do that. I wish we could. <laughs> oh, Cheryl says, everything is a plus right now in that kitchen. The soup, the fruit basket, the kitchen looks great. Company, lovely chat, great interaction. The two big chefs, awesome guys. 
Pika nice, yes, 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 I'm telling you, Bruce. So we certainly appreciate you guys, and thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next live. You know, we try to spread them out a little bit because you know people are busy and everything. So, um, you know, we do try to give a little break in between. But every now and then, you see us pop up with something that we think makes sense for the time of year that it is, or just something that you fancy. And if you know when you watch any of my videos, the regular ones, if there's something that you want us to, you know, to feature in one of our lives, you know, a recipe about it. We'll be happy to do it. Most times you'll do like more than one item, but today we just said we're just gonna do soup and that's it, nothing else. So there'll be more coming. So thank you guys so much. Thank you, Stacy, for your kind words and everyone else on here. And you know, we do hope to um, see you in the next live video. Take care and happy gardening. Take care. <laughs> Bye.